CataractCoach.com. Challenging UV to cataract in a monocular patient. Our operating guest surgeon is Dr. Jay Lim from the Philippines. This patient is truly monocular. Tice is on the left eye. This is the right eye. You can see a very opaque cataract, shallow anterior chamber, a lot of synechiae. Going to be a tough case. Starting off with two paracentesis incisions. And that's important to give yourself good access here. And the first step is to break the sneaky, separate the iris and those adhesions from the anterior lens capsule. Tripan blue dye was placed to help stay in the anterior lens capsule. And here's more viscoelastic. Now you really have to take your time and separate these adhesions, break these uh, sneaky, lice them for 360 degrees. Now sometimes you can use a blunt instrument like that spatula to separate them. But if they don't, you may have to use these sharp scissors. Now, careful here to just cut the fibrotic bands. Don't penetrate or puncture the anterior lens capsule. And so now an extra pairs and teeth incision can help provide even more access. And now a bimanual approach. In the right hand, these micro scissors, or the forceps, in the left hand, the micro scissors, and going around here to cut off these fibrotic areas of attachment. There's even like a pupillary membrane there. And by cutting this off, we'll be able to free up the iris from its adhesions to the anterior lens capsule. Now, this patient had a very tremendous amount of prior uveitic issues, a lot of inflammation in the eye, a lot of sneaky formation, a lot of, of cataract formation, obviously very opaque. All of this up until this point is simply to break the sneaky, to lyse the adhesions. And now you can see it's nice and freed up, and you can go through the various paras, 360, and separate that. The main incision is going to be made now, and that's going to be the main incision for FACO. And here comes a pupil expansion device, so a pupil ring. Now, many different designs of these are available. This looks like one that's made out of PMA, and that will be placed into this injector and placed in the anterior chamber. So this pupil expansion ring can now be engaged on the pupil margin to really expand that pupil. Remember, we have still not yet done the capsularexis. So you've got two of those scrolls appropriately holding the pupil margin now. And now going through the paracentesis, you can use the chopper or some Sinsky hook or some other instrument, a manipulator, to really get all of those on the pupil margin to really hook it. And then it will expand the pupil. And you want to create about a six millimeter pupil, maybe a little bit larger. And there we go. Now you've got good exposure. You could have also used iris hooks. Here comes a sharp needle now. Looks like injecting more viscoelastic. There it is. And now it's time for the capsulorexis. So, so much time just on preparing, right? And that's appropriate. Take your time here. So start on the rexus here by poking with the needle and now using the forceps. We want to make a sufficiently large rexus. Typically, the iris tends not to stick to a hydrophobic acrylic IOL. So on your Bausch & Lomb Vista, your Alcon Acrosoft or Clarion, your Johnson & Johnson Technus lenses, these acrylic hydrophobic lenses tend not to let the iris stick to them. So you want to make a good rexus because the iris may stick again to the anterior lens capsule, but it won't stick to the IOL. So now once we have that big rexus, a 5 millimeter rexus, the nucleus can be removed. And this patient is, of course, on the younger side. So while this lens is relatively opaque, there's not a tremendous amount of nuclear density. Just take your time and be cautious in removing the lens material. And so there it comes out of the eye pretty easily. And now you can clean up the cortex and remaining lens uh, material with the eye probe. So in these uveitic eyes, sometimes you may find that there's more cortex that's adherent. You may find that there's weaker zone support. These eyes have been through a lot. And so, so far, so good. It looks pretty reasonable. And now a little bit of hydration of the incisions, and that's just to make sure that we keep the AC formed. So when we're doing the bimanual cortex removal like this, you're not going to lose a lot of fluid coming out that main incision. So I like that preemptive hydration of the incisions just to aid in that regard, to make your system a little bit more watertight. Here comes the eye well going inside. It looks like a three-piece lens. And so it's going in three-piece acrylic. looks like a hydrophobic acrylic. Good choice. And that lens, of course, can be placed in the capsule bag. And that'll be placed very easily. And again, the iris will tend not to stick to that IOL optic. Now the pupil expansion ring can be carefully unhooked from the pupil margin and then pulled out of the eye pretty easily. 
Finishing up here, cortex is already out, obviously. Now we're just taking out the viscoelastic. This side looks pretty good. Maybe a few little fragments left. Seal it up. And what a beautiful outcome. I like the 10 on nylon the incision also. Post-op, wow, what a beautiful result. A lucky patient and a beautiful surgery.